I want to thank Carly for stopping by. Now, head football coach Rob Smith, and smile looks a little bigger. I think he took about 10 years off. Uh, coach, you look good. I'm sure a lot of that uh, big win for the team on the road this past weekend. A huge win, JB. Uh, not an easy trip. We left Thursday morning, got back Sunday night, so we were gone four days. I think I counted up about 20 hours in a bus, uh, three different airports. Uh, and and uh, got one big win, and really that's all that matters. And and all the credit goes to our players. They uh, handled the, the 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 trip well, dealt with the elevation, 7,500 feet. They're in Alamosa, uh, played a team in their home opener, and yet we did what we needed to do to win a game. So very very pleased. Yeah, nobody expected you to win outside of your group of guys, your core, yeah. and, and your humble fans. Everyone else on the West Coast, well. Humboldt's a two and nine team. Uh, we're going to chalk that up as a win, and then you go out, you punch them in the mouth. You're up 16 nothing early, and, and then it was a dogfight. What we have impressed upon our players, really from the start, is that this is a new beginning, and the past does not matter. Whether that was a, a positive pass or a negative pass or something in between, that this is a new beginning, and it, it, it is in so many ways. Uh, uh, with so many new players and, and players that uh, uh, you know, new to our program, it doesn't matter where they came from. Uh, we're all together now, and, and it was really nice to see how, how that team has, has come together. And certainly uh, uh, to deal with the, the travel conditions like we did and go back and, and win that first game. There was a point in the third quarter we had just thrown the interception. Uh, they closed the gap to two points, and, and a lot of teams would have folded. You, you're dealing with the elevation and, and the fatigue factor that that, that, that creates. But, uh, uh, again, credit to our players. They bowed their neck a little bit and, and, and really – uh, took re uh, retook control of the game and, and uh, controlled the latter part of the third quarter and really controlled the fourth quarter. We had uh, a time of possession advantage uh, in the second half of 20 minutes, 21 minutes to 9 minutes, I think, and in the fourth quarter, almost 11 minutes to, to just over four minutes. So that's how you win games. Coach, uh, you, you were calling the plays again, which you've done most of your career. Uh, you bookended it pretty well. Touchdown pass for 77 yards on the opening play and a fourth and seven touchdown play to end the game. Uh, and it was all gravy, I guess, in the middle, but uh, you, you didn't take long to find your groove. Well, uh, again, we, uh, we script our first 10 plays. It's just something I have done for years, and sometimes it will vary 10 plays, 12 plays, 15 plays, but uh, the players know what that first play or what the first 10 plays are going to be, and, and uh, I have always liked as a, as a play caller to take advantage on that first play and try to get something you know the other opponent the defense that you're going to face is is obviously they're 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 very excited they're probably going to react or overreact maybe on that first play so a lot of times I'll apply some misdirection and what we did on on the first play Saturday was what we call an alley screen and it starts with play action uh, in this case to our right the defensive left and then a quick play fake and come back and throw a screen back against that so you get and our job uh, our, what we tell our players is we want to get at least a two-step reaction from the linebackers well in that play we got more than two <laughs> steps and uh, and Corey Stolmeyer did the rest with uh, some good downfield blocking yeah, 77 yards and it was a foot race and they were not going to catch it all right obviously one of the big question marks your quarterback that's what uh, like so many football camps across America who's going to be the guy Mike Pru steps in only a sophomore he started five times and to be honest, Coach, like most of the quarterbacking last year was not spectacular. Yeah. Uh, he definitely turned in a spectacular performance, 300-plus yards, three or four touchdowns, but more importantly, the leadership he showed in leading the Lumberjacks uh, this past week at Adams State. And Mike Pru is our starting quarterback for all those reasons, JB. Uh, just had was 20 of 29, but more importantly than, than those numbers that, that, that uh, everyone can read was the leadership he displayed on Saturday. That's the same leadership. Uh, that we have seen from him really from the beginning through last spring through the summer he was the one largely responsible for organizing a lot of the workouts uh, the 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 passing drills and such that we did this summer and and uh, i i do know this our players have great confidence in mike prue as a quarterback they also have confidence in chris bolt and jeff davis the two quarterbacks behind him but but certainly right now mike is 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 uh, our number one quarterback and and I thought he played an outstanding game. Named the conference offensive player of the week uh, for his performance. Uh, really had very few mistakes. The interception uh, that he threw, uh, you know, obviously he'd like to have that one back. But uh, uh, there was an open receiver on that. The receiver that we were throwing to kind of pulled up early on his route. That's just some of the things that happen early on in the season that you hope to correct. But uh, his command, his leadership in the huddle uh, certainly played a large role in our success on Saturday. All right, of course, uh, you being a coach, I know you enjoyed it on Sunday. and. Outside of this interview, it's behind you. Western Oregon comes to town. Here's a program that uh, 
they've gone through the rebuilding mode and they are there. They're a strong team. They did lose to a very tough Eastern Washington Division One program. They're coming to the Red Revolt. They're going to be hungry for their first win. They are going to be very hungry. And, and uh, I've played Western Oregon ever since I first got into this conference back in 1987 and, and uh, uh, been on both sides of good battles with them. But uh, I know last year, Arn Ferguson, the head coach here, has done a tremendous job. And, and uh, you know, they were much like Humboldt State. A few years ago, they had a one-win season, I think, in in 2003 or four, something like that. But he had a plan, he, and he stuck to that plan. And, and uh, last year when we played them, I really felt that it was the best Western Oregon team that I had seen in, in quite some time. And uh, we'll have our hands full, but uh, we are excited to be at home. Uh, the fans will enjoy what they see. This is a brand-new Humboldt State football team, and, and uh, you're going to see a lot of players that, uh, for the first time. But uh, I think we gained great confidence coming off that win back at Adams State, and we need to be ready. Conference opener, uh, you know, we did not win a conference game last year, and so uh, uh, our players uh, were, you know, they had their their their, their eyes set on on uh, performing well in front of the home fans, and hopefully we can find a way to get after Western Oregon. Uh, for the folks who are sitting at home watching this, as this airs, uh, you know, on Thursday night, uh, what what would you say about the Lumberjacks? What are they in store for when they pay their money to get in? What are they paying to see? Well, we want to see quality product on the field, and, and that's certainly in, in all three phases. Whether that be offense, defense, special teams, you want to be you you, you want to play well, and and, and uh, uh, certainly we can build off of uh, the things we did well this past Saturday as we prepare for Western Oregon. But uh, uh, we also want to be entertaining. We want to play hard, aggressive uh, football on the defensive side, uh, have some big plays, and we think we have some big play players on the offensive side. So again, I think they'll be very very pleased with what they see, and and. Uh, uh, they're going to see improvement. This is an improved football team over over what we had a year ago uh, with some some exciting young players. So uh, I encourage them, come on out. We need your support, want your support as, as we get ready for Western Oregon. And the oxygen will be there. I know I almost passed out after the uh, Matt Smith touchdown. And Coach, the players may not say it, but you're sweet, bud. The B was back only for Rob Smith. I'm J.P. Mathers, Dan Collin, coming up next. Dustin, what are you doing on the field? Lumberjack for life. But you don't play for the Lumberjacks anymore. Look, HSU football gave me and my teammates a great college experience and prepared us for life off the field. By going to hsujacks.com, click on Donate, then click on JFAN, I can give, so you and our future teammates can better experience life as a Jack. And it's so easy, even a football player could do it. Join the tradition of Jacks football. Become a teammate at hsujacks.com. Exciting college football returns to Redwood Bowl this Saturday. The Jacks take on Western Oregon in the first home game of the year. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. All youth football players wearing their team jerseys get in free. Sun Valley Floral Farms will be giving out free flower bouquets. And the first 160 people wearing Go Jacks t-shirts get a free slice of Big Pete's Pizza. HSU students are admitted free with their current student ID. Jacks football this Saturday night. Go to hsujacks.com for more 